What's up guys, it's Andrew at Elite Gaming HQ, and the question we're trying to answer, can you play games like Mass Effect Andromeda and Battlefield 1 on a $350 PC? In today's video, we're going to go over the parts, and I'm going to quickly run you through the build process. And after that, we're going to benchmark this PC on Skyrim, Fallout 4, Killing 4 2, Mass Effect Andromeda, and Battlefield 1. This computer only has a $50 GPU, and we're going to see if it's up to the task. First, let's look at the case. It's an Aza Cosmos, which you can pick up for 35 to 40 bucks. When I got this case, it also had a mail-in rebate, which knocked it down a couple extra bucks. Overall, it was a pretty good experience for such a low-budget case. It has function, but none of the bells and whistles, like front port USB 3. But my motherboard provides it on the back, so I wasn't too worried. Next, we got to talk about the cooler, and if you watched my tech deals of the week on Sunday, you would have saw that the Cooler Master Hyper T2 was on sale for $9.99. So I picked me up a T2, and I'll slap it in here because why not? And you guys will get to see firsthand the value of this budget cooler. Just looking at the size, you can clearly see it'll outperform stock. As for the rest of the parts, we have an AMD FX6300. We went with the 6300 over any of the 83 models because of sheer price. With going with an AM3 Plus socket, we can get an inexpensive motherboard, as well as this processor, or a variant of this processor, is recommended by a lot of developers on their minimum system requirements. In fact, the Mass Effect Andromeda recommends a 6350, which is basically this processor with a slight overclock. So that's why I went with the decision to take this over something like the Pentium dual core 4 thread processor that everybody hooting about but overall the premium would have jacked the price up for the motherboard and the ram next we went with the asus m5a78l usb3 micro atx motherboard one thing nice about this motherboard is it had four ram slots so we can always upgrade the ram down the road if we wish and on to the ram we have two patriot modules four gigabyte ddr3 1600 nothing too special there as for the hard drive we got a seagate 500 gigabyte 7200 rpm internal mechanical hard drive i believe i picked this up for 30 dollars and i pressed has since went up to 40. A 450 watt power supply, which is more than enough for this 228 watt build, along with our MSI R7 242GB video card. To top it all off, I threw in a 120mm red LED fan for better airflow and a better aesthetic, and I also installed Windows 10. If you already have Windows on another machine, it's not that hard to get Windows 10 on your new PC. Okay, now let me walk you through the build. So I used my MX4, which I recommend for any socket. It gives you a performance gain over the stock shit. I never use that stock gel shit anyway. I just wipe it off and attach this MX4. Now upon mounting the heatsink, I discovered that I didn't like the way that the fan was blowing. So I spun the heatsink so that the Cooler Master brand name would have been facing right side up through the window and I turned the fan to an orientation in which it's a pull. And the reason for that is, you'll see later, I wanted to be able to push the air through the top of the case through the opening that I had. There's the opening right here. Okay, so next I installed the ramp, and then I opened up the case. Be very careful not to scratch your acrylic. I usually leave the plastic on, but this case I wanted to get some pictures. All right, so here's the case bare bones. Let's push in our IO shield and then mount our motherboard. There it is. Okay, so here's the cables. See, I really didn't like the way the cables looked and the power supply. So I have this tubing I usually use, which kind of ran me into some problems because after I put the tubing on, I discovered that the power connection for the top of the motherboard did not reach. So I actually had to take it back out of the tube tethering and run a different set. This is me mounting the power supply. And yes, I mounted the power supply with a fan facing up. And I'll explain why I did that in the end. And see with the extra tubing, it really has a better aesthetic. All right, then we're gonna install our exterior fan. We're also going to plug in all our little pins at the bottom, put in our hard drive, run the SSDs and the power to our hard drive, plug in our front fans, and also screw in our graphics card. There's a lot of things I pan through really quick. Let's go into why I made the power supply fan an upward facing one. All right, first I want to say, doing that play-by-play, -play, trying to narrate as I'm watching the video, is a lot harder than I thought it would be. I was skipping steps, it was making me stutter a little bit, it was kind of a pain. 
I'll work on it because I'm doing a build next week and the week after so I'll try to get it together so so it's a little better by then I mean I was forgetting stuff like the front USB ports the front audio jacks how I handle my cable management how I intricately tether everything together so that it doesn't fall apart upon shipping but what are you gonna do now let's talk about that upward facing PSU setup I think at some point I might do a whole video on this. There is a lot of points to make and a lot to talk about here, but a lot of it has to do with preference on your build or personal preference. Both ways have their advantages, but if you look at this build here, for the people that think that I'm just going to be blowing hot air right into my build, yes, I know, because this case doesn't have a lot of intake with just the front of it. We have our intake here, as you can clearly see. That's going to be the front fan. Now I turned the PC cooler into an outwards facing fan through the hole in the top. So you're going to have heat go out here. We also have this 120 millimeter fan that expelling heat out the back of the case. So we really kind of have more exhaust than intake, especially since the front's limited. I'm using the power supply to exhaust heat out of the case because it's going to push, to be fair, mildly warm air through the case. Now a lot of times you wouldn't do this because you would have a huge graphics card in your way and your hot air is just going to bump right into that graphics card. It's not going to perform as well. With this small form factor GPU, the air is going to pass right by it and it's going to head to the top of the case where we're exhausting everything. So that's why I decided to do it that way, and also one good way to burn out your PSU is have it exhaust down, get dust caught in your exterior dust filter, and not clean it out often enough. That'll kill a power supply quicker than anything else. And quite honestly, this power supply shouldn't run too hot since the system is only using 50% of its actual capacity. Okay, so this video has been going on for a while. This is the build video. Tomorrow I'll post the benchmarks. And if it already is tomorrow or any day after, I'll put a card right here to the benchmarks. And if you guys have been watching this long, let me know in the comments below. The first person that lets me know, I'll send you a free Steam gift card. We'll see who gets it. That'll be interesting to see who's watching this long. Giveaways randomly in the channel. That's what I'm talking about. But anyway, I'll catch you guys in tomorrow's video when we benchmark this thing. I don't really want to call it a potato. It's not quite that. It's a little bit better. But we'll see what it can do. Honestly, I have no fucking clue. I haven't benchmarked it yet. So we're going to get to see together. So I'll catch you in that video guys, and thanks for supporting my channel. I'm Andrew, and this is Elite Gaming HQ. Thanks guys.